Hello folks, how you doing? Just a quick video, I'm a bit huffy puffy. I've just had a walk downtown and back again. I normally do that on Sunday, just do a power walk ish. You know, down the town and back again. There's a, there's a tiny little hill, not much of one, but um, it's good. Well, it's good to do. Even going down, you know, to because obviously you're using different muscles going downhill to set to stabilize yourself. So yeah, that's good. It's a good thing. I do that the same most Sundays now. Yeah. Well, I used to before I drove. I used to walk everywhere, and yet now I drive. I pretty much drive everywhere. So it's just a Sunday thing now that I I just walk down town and back again. So yeah, it's good. Not a lot of walking, just a bit, but um, it's all good when it comes down to it. Yeah. Yeah. What's been on my mind today? Okay. Um, well, the main thing, like when I was doing, when I walked downtown, I was speaking to God as I'm going down and up again. And so, what I was speaking to the Father about there today was, is he going to have my back? Well, as in, you know, stepping out in faith is great and all, but the thing about stepping out in faith is you speak ahead of the event. That's the point. If you're stepping out in faith, you're always speaking ahead of the event. Because otherwise, you know, you're not really stepping out in faith if it's already happened. You're joining in with something that's already been you know, done, sort of thing. Okay. Um, but that's the point. Is that if you're stepping out in faith, then you need Father to have your back. And, you know, sometimes it is the case, as, as I say, I mean, you know, the early church itself, there would have been times when, yeah, because it was the early church and nothing really had happened yet. Yeah, there have been times where people are saying, are you insane? You still think this is going to happen? Well, it did. And then, as I say, you, you had the, uh, the move from the religious church to the charismatic -y sort of churches. And again, when that started, people in the religious church would have said to the people leaving, are you insane? We have a sort of steady church here. What are you doing going off and you know, talking crap about us and you know, saying that this is God's new way sort of thing? Yeah. And again, did it take a while before you know, it looks as if God had had their back? Yes, it did. But does that mean that um, God's definitely going to have my back? No. <laughs> no, it doesn't at all. Because if I'm wrong, God won't have my back. Yeah. If I'm right 40%, he'll have my back 40%. But not 100. Yeah, you know, so it's like, yeah. But if I'm right 40%, he might not even have my back at all because... He might be waiting for the other 60% 60, 60 to catch up. Yeah, because the problem is, if you're right 40% and God then has your back, it looks to other people as if you're right 100%. So, yeah. Well, that's what I'm saying. You know, with regards to the reasons why God hasn't been in the church, there are a lot of reasons why that is the case. And different reasons for different churches. But it's very much a case that it is. The Father is the one who knows what those issues are in each church, the same as he knows what issues are in each individual person. That's why I said, you know, there, there is no way, shape, or form that a pastor can do what they're doing, can sort of um, come up with a message practice it perfect it perform it sell it and it be accurate and it be exactly what people need because there is no way shape or form that that pastor would understand what the people in their church need absolutely no way shape or form What we need, to a certain degree, is communication from sides who don't necessarily agree with each other. 
that is true we do need that sort of communication but that's why it gets annoying to me like when i look at the the videos and um i see that you know probably nine out of ten i've got a thumbs down and it's probably the same person and this person never actually bothers to give a comment and they say why he's given a thumbs down or she what, 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 why that actually still bothering to click on the videos if it's just to give a thumbs down what on earth is the point in that if you're not actually saying why any chance that things can get better and it will put it this way if i'm wrong and this is this is where it really pisses me off about church and always has done is that when people think you're wrong they won't actually bother to let you know and try to help you to deal with it that's why i was pissed off so much with that woman with the woman that i thought was supposed to be my wife that's why what she was doing pissed me off so much because if i'm wrong enough for her to block me on facebook and all of that without actually communicating with me at all if i'm that bloody wrong that she has to do that surely she should care enough sorry uh, breathing <laughs> got saliva in me i'm sorry surely she should care enough What happened just then is because of the fact that I was talking, 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 and I forgot to swallow. <laughs> it does happen. Yeah, basically, yeah, she should care enough about a fellow believer to, if she thinks that person is in the wrong, to actually bother to communicate that to that person, to help that person to understand that. Because, you know, that wrongness of that person could continue and could lead them onto a, 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 a wrong path and she doesn't give a shit about that good or christian means nothing does it really you know that's what i'm saying about all this point of you know supposedly you know christians are the way the truth and etc um but they really couldn't give a shit about anyone could they even in church, I've mentioned the point about accountability. They don't want accountability. Oh. Accountability is where you help each other to be on the right path. And you don't care about that. But there you go. I mean, basically, that's what I've said. I mentioned accountability so much. It's because of the fact that if you want to get the church right... If you want to have, even right at the moment, where if we, if, if we are in a transition of going from Christianity to this new thing of God, during this transition, there's no reason why churches still can't flourish. Yeah, not at all, because things haven't transferred over from one to the other yet. So therefore, churches can still flourish immensely, even as they are right now but they won't unless there is accountability there has to be accountability but accountability in love and that's the point accountability in love that's well, like this friend this ex-friend of mine that i contacted recently um his way of doing things in the past was like accountability, but accountability in exalting self rather than in love. It, it, it was seen as, as a challenge, as how clever he was sort of thing. But a challenge to see if he could get you to accept something wrong as right. Therefore proving that what you believed wasn't solid but therefore proving what he believed is solid sort of thing you know and that's not done enough so that's no better than someone who doesn't bother at all really because accountability has to be done in love it has to be done without any judgment has to be done with absolute mercy, absolute grace. 
yeah, and patience. But that's why, you know, you know, before I left Bournemouth, I knew I was going to leave the area. Um, and I said to the pastor about some degree of accountability, I've said this on the channel before, about having people in the church praying for someone else in the church and then after about six months of that, switch it over to someone else. So everyone is always being prayed for by someone different. But that way you get to know each other, you get a degree of accountability. Yeah. Because if you're speaking to the person praying for you and talking to them about your your struggles and the things you, you struggle with as a sinner, then next time you speak to them, you want to say, I'm doing better. You don't really want to say you're doing worse, do you? So you get a degree of accountability there, which is good. That's a good thing. That's what you want. But no, the pastor said no. Why? Because if you have people knowing other people and knowing other people better, then they will get to know the pastor better. They will get to know his failings. They will get to know his weaknesses. And as soon as they do that, they might want to replace him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, of course. You, you There's a lot of that as to the reason why not. But there's also, as I said yeah, the other day, you know, are you willing to put the work in? So that's another reason why it's, you know, it's difficult in that way. Because people just aren't willing to put the work in. Yeah, that's a big thing in itself, isn't it, really? Yeah, because you've in doing that, you've got to face what the problems are. When you face what the problems are, you now have to deal with them. Yeah, that's not easy. Well, because a lot of the problems that people have are deep set and they're going to be dug out. And that is not easy. That can often be painful. And people don't want that to me. And it's understandable. I understand why people don't want that. Hmm? Oh, anyone can understand why people wouldn't want it. But only a few can understand why people would want it. And that's the people that have gone through it and come through the other end. Well, that's it. When you've gone through it and come through the other end, you see that, yes, painful, but, my God, so much worth it. Yeah, the stand, the eight month stand, was really painful at times. Really difficult at times. Certainly falling and, you know, yeah. Not easy in any way, shape or form. But, that was the point. I still stood. Right up until the final hour. So, with that being the case, okay. Yeah. I've been there, I've done it. And so I understand. And for years beforehand, I had God helping me to deal with problems, deal with issues that I had. Yeah. And yeah, that was a painful process. But definitely worth it. Yeah. Well, put it this way it's only worth it if what I'm saying about the way God is going now is actually true. If it isn't, well then, yeah, it really wasn't worth it because I'm not in a, yeah, I'm in a position where I'm deluded, if that's the case, aren't I? I'm in a position where I'm you know, going in the right direction and believing in something that is going to, only going to fall, you know, which is not good. But you know what? If that's the case, I don't know. At least I can say to myself, well, okay, yeah. I hoped in something which was different, which was far more likely than what the church is hoping for. Yeah, because, you know, certainly my understanding, is it more likely that God is doing things as I understand it 
or more likely that we're going to have revival. Well, people have been waiting 20, 30 years for revival and there's been no signs of it really. Um, is, it, is that likely? No. I mean, I've been waiting how long? Just a month, just over a month now I've been waiting. So who's the more insane? <laughs> I've, I've raised this question before, but it is true. Who's the more insane? I've been waiting a month. They've been waiting 20 years. I could be wrong. They were definitely wrong. You know, those people in church that have been waiting that long because they believed, you know, 20 years ago that revival was going to come really soon. It didn't. So they were wrong. So would it be sensible for me to hang my hat on that hook? No, because that's already been proved to be wrong. Now, does that mean because it's been wrong in the past, it will always be wrong? No. Well, because like, it was a case that, um, you know, a thousand years ago, people may have believed that the Lord was coming back soon. Well, if they're believing soon, according to God's soon, then they're right. Soon, according to um, our soon, then they were massively wrong. But does that mean that that belief that the Lord's coming back is wrong? No, it just means that they were wrong to believe it happened soon in their lifetime. As I said, yeah, yes, say it, it's true that um, well, you may see that as today's because it probably oh, it would be probably today's because it would have come on after midnight. Yes, onto YouTube. Well, that one, yeah. Um, it is very much a case that what wasn't suitable in the past may be suitable now. So that could mean that the re revival wasn't suitable then, but it may be now. Is that possible? Yeah, but that's only going on the basis that anything is possible. I've said before, is it possible that a pink elephant with yellow spots will come bursting through my wall? Yeah. Is it likely? No. And I say revival is probably as likely as that, really. It certainly looks to be the case right now, yes. If you look at all the evidence, you'd say it's very unlikely that there's going to be... Because this is the point, you're, just, you're still supposed to look at evidence. You're still supposed to look at... Yeah, because the Lord says, you know, if you want to see if a, if a tree is right, or if a vine is right, you judge it by the fruit. So, okay, this belief that it's going to be revival. Look at the fruit of that. Is there any fruit of that at all? No. There isn't in any way, shape or form. I can look at the fruit of what I understand and see that well, there's been some fruit that my nature has changed. But is that enough? Does that mean that this is actually... No. And that's why today I was, when I was walking down the road... Because th that's why part of the reason why I do the walk on a Sunday. It's quieter. There's less traffic. Because it can get quite stinky. I used to find that walking down the road into town before I had a car. It can get quite ugh with the car fumes. Yeah. So Sunday is a bit quieter. So that's, that's okay. You can hear yourself think, which is also good with regards to you know, speaking to Father. Yeah. And but that's part of it is to do that, to have that little bit of time in a different location, doing something different. Um, yeah. And as I say, that's why the subject was today with Father is, are you going to have my back on this? Yeah. Um, yeah. Has what I've been saying is that of you? If it is of you, are you going to you know, be by my side on this at any point? Because I understand that, yeah, that when you're walking out something, certainly in faith, that um, you are going to head that thing. But the problem is, as I said at the beginning, there does need to be a, a joining of God. Yeah. People seeing God in it. Yeah. And so far, I don't think that is the case. But certainly, as I also said at the beginning, with regards to um, giving thumbs down, I've got no problem with people doing that. But come on. I mean, yeah. 
If you are someone who would call yourself a Christian, if you think I'm wrong, then take the time to tell me why you think I'm wrong. Yeah, if you if you don't understand the Bible when it says you were supposed to do that, then go and read it. Yeah, I mean the Bible certainly doesn't say you're supposed to give a thumbs down but never actually bother to try and correct your brother. Does it? So correction is all part of it. It's part of you know, what we should be facing. So I mean the the, um, the lack of correction, the lack of accountability, the lack of um, or any of that sort of stuff really is why the church has gotten the messes in. So you want to continue disrespecting me in the way you've disrespected the church? See, if you're in a church that isn't doing the things that the Bible says it should be doing, you should be standing up and demanding better. You should. Everyone in that church who can see that this is not what the Bible says should be standing up and demanding better. Because by doing that, you might actually get there. But if you think the best way to do things is to sit in your chair in church and just gently pray to God that God will make things better, mm. on the cross, he said, it is finished. If you think God is going to send the sun down again for you, you are massively mistaken. It happened. It's not going to happen again. You think God's going to send down a revival to do it all again, then you're massively mistaken. You're not. Yeah, the Lord himself says, you know, you need to make yourself ready. If you're in that situation, can you truly say you're ready? Really? You're accountable for you. So with regards to you being ready, that's up to you. That's not up to your church. It's not up to other members of the church. It's up to you. Even though, yes, I have said about accountability. But in the end, you get judged for your sins. If you face judgment, you face judgment because of what you've done, not because of what everyone else hasn't done for you. That's more the point. So there you go. I'm going to leave you to it. I need to make sure I swallow. <laughs> yeah. Have a wonderful day. It's a, well, certainly here in Scotland, it's a beautiful day today. Very sunny. Similar to it as it is on this picture, actually, right now. It's very much like that today. But you take care. God bless. I'll speak to you soon. Bye-bye.